Hello everyone, my name is Kevin and I'd like to welcome you all to our latest Novich webinar series episode. Uh, today we are partnering up once again with Chaos Group, this time with 3D professional Simon Balabanov. Uh, V-Ray 3.0 is the most anticipated software release in the CG industry this year. Artist-driven features and improvements such as single-click progressive rendering, optimized brute force sampling, and faster hair rendering are just a small part of what's in store. Uh, Simon's presentation will provide an in-depth look at some of the new features and updates. So don't miss this chance to learn about the next best thing. If you don't, if you don't know who Simon is, um, Simon is a 3D modeling and rendering expert. Uh, he is a 3D professional with more than six years of experience in the field of 3D modeling and rendering. Uh, before joining Chaos Group, he worked as a CG supervisor at some of the biggest animation studios in Bulgaria. Uh, Simon joined the Chaos Group 3D team in 2012, and since then he is one of the company's top presenters focused on V-Ray for 3DX Max and V-Ray for Maya. Uh, he currently holds a bachelor degree in industrial engineering from Technical University, Sofia. Uh, today's presentation is about 40 minutes long and afterwards we'll have a brief Q&A session where Simon from Chaos Group will answer your questions live. So feel free to submit your own to us at any time in the chat window below. Uh, but before we get going to the presentation, here's an overview of what we do at Novich. Um, if you are interested, well, in purchasing the latest digital version of Chaos Group's V-Ray for 3DX Max, it is available from us at Novich in the United States, Canada, and Mexico. So if you want to learn more about this and the rest of our Chaos Group catalog, you're welcome to call and speak with our representative, Bob Thayer. Uh, you can reach him by his email address, bob at novich.com. And to get a glimpse at who is changing the world of design one step at a time, please visit Novich's very own blog. Uh, every week, our interviews shine a light on those innovators whose work break out from the norm, and I do want to mention and stress that uh, answers from your webinar questions will be shared here as well. So for more details, visit us at blog.novich.com. And to stay up to date with what's happening in the design industry along with Novich's latest webinars and product promos, do like us on Facebook. Coming up next week, uh, NPower's Power Servicing for SolidWorks provides organic Class A surface modeling in SolidWorks through an innovative unification of subdivision modeling and SolidWorks features. Uh, take the plunge and join us as we learn all there is to work flawlessly with power servicing for SolidWorks. Uh, the webinar is free and will last about one hour, including the Q&A session. So if you want to sign up for this free event, head on over to novich.com slash webinar slash 88. And last but not least, uh, if you have to leave early, no worries. Uh, today's webinar is being recorded live, so if you want to rewatch episode 87 in its entirety, as always, you can find it on our Novich webinar series channel through Vimeo and YouTube. Now, with that said, um, Simon, are you ready? Uh, nope. Yes. <coughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, oh, I was cool. um, I was uh, just getting uh, a glass of water. Yeah, exactly. Um, so <laughs> I'm ready. Um, cool. We can start switching over to you now. Yeah, I just want to remind everybody: if you have questions, submit them into the chat window, and we'll try to answer them after the presentation. All right. Thanks, guys. Enjoy. Okay, so um, we can, um, here I have uh, 3 Studio Max open. Um, can you see it? Uh, not at the moment. Move your window away. Okay, something is, uh, let me just try and... Okay, so <coughs> there we go. I, hope, I hope you do see it uh, clearly. Okay, um, first of all, my, my uh, interface uh, has been shrunk down so that uh, you can see uh, uh, larger uh, labels on the menus. Um, so bear with me uh, with this small resolution. I know that it's not, uh, um, it's not the best one. Uh, first, um, I, wanted to, uh, I wanted to say um, hello to everyone once again. Um, as you already know, I'm Simeon Balabanov, and uh, I'm a 3D artist at, at Chaos Group, shortly. Um, in the last 10 years, V-Ray has proven to be a flexible, reliable, and very easy to use tool, and this is why it has become a um, render of choice for many studios and uh, individuals. And uh, um, So, you know what I, you, you, you know what I mean. Um, Today I'm going to um, try and show you a sneak peek, um, just, a, uh, just a few new things that we're going to release with uh, the most anticipated <laughs> release, software release uh, this year. 
uh, which is Vray 3, um, 3.0, actually. Um, just one uh, little addition. Um, last year we made, uh, we, we had a 10th year anniversary, so um, 10 years of, already 11 years of uh, Vray out there. So let's see what happens in the next 10 years. The first thing that um, we have improved in uh, in uh, Vray 3, uh, or we are still improving and uh, debugging, is um, the brute force rendering method. And um, as you already know, it's a GI method. So here I have this scene, which is a, a frog with uh, a little bamboo and uh, a little background. Uh, I have set this scene to be rendering uh, to be rendered with the brute force. So let's. Uh, Let's render, and uh, actually, just as a comparison, I would like to show you the same scene in True Studio Max 2013, which has installed Vray of 2.4. So, the same scene, the same settings, I'm just going to hit the render button, and uh, I will leave it rendering. <coughs> Meanwhile, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about... Um, uh, about the way we we tried to to um, improve V-Ray. Um, we decided that uh, after 10 years, uh, a lot of options uh, have been introduced in the interface of, of V-Ray. So we tried to make uh, a way to to dynamically change how uh, these settings uh, look like. So we introduced something called. Um, Actually, we don't have a name for it, but uh, you can you can think of it as a, a basic to advanced uh, option switcher, which which will hide um, the necessary or most of the settings that uh, are uh, that we the users barely touch, um, and you will be given the control to show them if you want to. However, um, this will obviously shrink the interface to a much more fr user friendly um, sizes. And um, there are a couple of buckets uh, left here. Um, meanwhile, I'm just going to show you. Um, no, let, let, let's let's wait for the render to finish. And I'm going to show you what I mean in just a couple of seconds. So there we we go. And we're done. So this render took. Uh, I hope you guys can see it. But um, this guy. Let's let's try and uh, increase the size of this thing. So this this uh, render took one minute and thirty eight seconds. So let's switch to Vray three point zero and render again. Here is a uh, here are some. Uh, history that uh, that I have uh, tested before starting the re the webinar, but um, first of first of all, you will see that um, using the same settings, we do have um, a bit of improvement. And as you can see from my render history, the first render took uh, one point thirty two seconds, and this one took one, one minute and 15 seconds. Uh, probably you can notice that my buckets are uh, are shrinked as I uh, approach the end of my re render, the final, the final pixels um, of my rendering, and uh, this is called dynamic bucket splitting. So um, we often, so uh, we actually, the, the designers, the, the uh, artists at the uh, Chaos Group, um, often, often we're waiting for <laughs> the last bucket to finish, which was obviously a waste of processing power. And um, we all know that smaller buckets render faster, so we just uh, implemented this new dynamic um, shrinking splitting of the bucket. And actually, this option is over here. Um, over here. Um, actually. In this scene, um, uh, this rendering took only 54 seconds because I was using uh, V-Ray uh, Embry. Uh, actually, I was using um, Embry, which is a specialized set of instructions for the newer 
um, Intel processors, which uh, optimizes uh, and uh, improves the computation of uh, floating point, um, or at least that's what I'm told, uh, floating point uh, operations. So, uh, in in uh, in simple words, it makes the rendering faster. And uh, because I was using this, it took uh, 54 seconds. Let's try and uh, render without it, so that we can see actually the real. Um, the, the actual um, brute force optimization. But as you can see, it um, in, uh, in, the, in the history uh, renders that I made here, uh, you can see it was uh, 1.32 uh, seconds, then um, this was VRA2, VRA3 gave me 1 um, minute and 15 seconds, and with the VRA Embry I had a render time of 51 seconds. Um, here we have 54 seconds because uh, I'm, uh, I, I do believe uh, GoToWebinar is slowing my machine a little bit, so this is why we have a couple of seconds difference. And as you can see, by utilizing the dynamic splitting of the bucket, we are utilizing all of our cores. Um, and not, uh, for example, waiting for this one last bucket uh, to finish and all the other cores uh, sitting around doing nothing. So, wasting electricity. And, yes, so uh, 1 minute 18 seconds as opposed to, uh, without go to webinar, 1 minute and 15 seconds. So, um, you can see by utilizing Embry, um, we have uh, more than 50% uh, speed increase. So um, I was talking about the options and um, the switcher of the interface. So um, you can find them. You can find it uh, in the global uh, in in the uh, global rollups uh, of each tab over here. Um, so by by having only basic you can see that we have just a couple of global options here. If I turn it to advanced, you will have a couple of more options located over here and uh, over here. And when we have experts, we have some uh, really, really uh, uh, legacy things and uh, checkbox that you, you don't use that often. So we shrink down the interface to just like this area. And of course, this is uh, optimized for or the other settings as well. So, for example, if you take a look at the color mapping, here we have a basic, advanced, an expert with the couple, a couple more settings. So, I hope you do like this uh, feature, guys. It's all, it's uh, no more uh, tedious scrolling around. Um, we can take a look, for example, in the radiance map. There are lots of, um, lots of um, elements missing as you can see, as opposed to this, which is a huge control for the radiance map, and you barely use the, uh, barely use the, the advanced and the expert settings. So, um, and if you take a look uh, here, Embry is uh, turned on. Okay, uh, I'm auto-saving. So, Embry is uh, available just like this, and you have a couple of options under advanced uh, for uh, optimization to conserve memory or optimization for motion blur and uh, high precision, which will uh, slow down a little bit um, the rendering. However, it will uh, give us more precision. And here is another uh, test that I have uh, done before this. Let's, uh, let's load this up. So, this is a rendering uh, of an entirely closed space, and uh, I have a, a, a matte plane which is closing the, the, the wall facing the camera. Um, okay, uh, I have a question uh, which is, can you use Embry on main workstation and not on render nodes? Um, to be honest, uh, I, if you want to render together, um, I think 
I think um, V-Ray will uh, automatically, uh, we're still developing this, so everything is, uh, as you already know, in, in beta, or if you don't know, uh, we have a beta for uh, V-Ray 3, but um, V-Ray will uh, automatically, before rendering, um, will detect if your CPU supports Embry, and it will turn on Embry only if you support it. So it will use it only if, if supported. So um, if you initiate a render from the workstation, and uh, this is, I mean, a distributed rendering, and your uh, render nodes don't have uh, the new instructions of, uh, of Intel uh, and can't run Embry, uh, VRA will still render, but not using the Embry. Um, however, I have to test this. Uh, to be honest, uh, I, haven't, I haven't tested this because yeah, there are lots of other things to be tested. <laughs> um, okay, so um, this is this was uh, VRA 3.05, as you can see, and it gave me one minute and five seconds. And if I actually let me set this to A and this to B, and switch to a vertical to horizontal divider, as you can see, there is similar noise. Um, I'm saying similar because uh, because due due to the changes in the core V-Ray, the noise pattern, um, the sampling pattern is different, and um, we can't compare it uh, exactly one to one. But with the with the, with a similar quality, we have a difference of uh, more than more than uh, twice the difference. Actually, from two minutes and twenty five seconds, we get to one minute and five seconds. And of course, this is using Embry. So um, pretty good, pretty decent. And this is only brute force, brute force. Um, okay, so moving on. Let's uh, see this new interesting feature. <coughs> um, often there there have been questions. Uh, let me render and then talk. Uh, often there have been questions of uh, why do why do I have uh, fireflies? I have heard this artifact, uh, but uh, um, basically we're speaking about artifacts in in uh, when you have glossy reflections, glossy reflected material, um, you and you have um, some of the samples hitting a very bright light source, and you have some 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 artifacts like this or like this or like this so um, it kind of looks like a bad anti-aliasing however uh, this is not the case uh, well it is a bad anti-aliasing but it, it's because we have a glossy uh, ray which hits a very very um, bright light source and the others um, the other glossy rays do not hit this uh, very bright light source and we get artifacts like this as I told you, so just one or two samples hit the bright source and the other not. So if when we have a difference in anti-aliasing of um, say 30 or 10, even 10, it's uh, very it's very um, obvious in the render. So we tried to find a one-click solution for you guys, and uh, we I believe we did it. And it's let me turn on the render settings. Um, it's in V-Ray under global switches. If we switch to advanced, it's a max ray intensity parameter. So what this does is it actually <coughs> compares each ray, when uh, each ray trace ray, and uh, compares it to this threshold, to this, uh, the, compares the intensity of, of the ray to this threshold. And uh, if this ray is, uh, the intensity of this ray is higher, it will be clipped to this value. So what this does is, um, well, first of all, it will get rid of, as you can see, of the uh, artifacts. And um, what's important here is that you will not lose um, dynamics in the in the image because you still will have reflections. Uh, the rays will be at least eight. Um, the value of the intensity will be at least eight, which is uh, pretty okay for compositing on, or or uh, proper um, calculations. So 
I, I do believe that uh, this is a really one-click solution for fixing this, this, uh, this problem. Um, let me, okay, let's wait for the render to finish. And you can see it's, it's much nicer. Um, I do have a more obvious example here. And this is uh, this cartoon car. Let me just, uh, actually, I do believe it's larger for you guys and you get the resizing thing. So let me, let me shrink this down and we render once again. So without the maximum ray intensity, here we can see a little bit of um, over bright pixels. Here we can see on the on the uh, grill and on this uh, because we have a car paint and it has uh, flakes inside of it and um, these flakes apparently these flakes are hitting a very bright spot in our HDR. I'm using a dome light here and these spots are also hitting some very bright uh, place in the HDR. I have glossiness um, in the floor as well so that I can show you that we have over bright pixels here as well. So I'm just going to turn the maximum intensity. This time I'm going to leave it at 10 and just re-render and concentrate on the part over here. And you can see we don't have the over bright pixels anymore. So, so you can see just very easy, very easy to use. Just uh, I'm going to repeat myself once again, but one-click solution. It's uh, I like these kinds of. Uh, as an artist, I liked uh, one-click solutions. No. And uh, yeah, that's that's actually the feature. Um, small thing, however, solving lots of uh, lots of troubles. Let's take a look at uh, our optimized hair. Um, here I'm using um, a plugin to generate the hair. However, um, I'm going to show you um, two things in one. Um, actually, with the with this version of V-Ray, we have introduced a new image sampler. Um, in addition to the fixed adaptive and adaptive subdivision, and this is the progressive render, the progressive sampler. Um, this is um, much like uh, V-Ray RT. However, uh, in V-Ray RT, you were always obliged to use. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing most of you know how uh, Viri RT works. It, it shoots progressively more and more samples until you get uh, better and better um, uh, refined anti-aliasing. And, um, and uh, the big, the big uh, thing about uh, Viri RT is that it's interactive. However, uh, the progressive image sampler is not interactive. You can't change things uh, while uh, refining using the progressive. Um, and it continuously refines the, the image. However, what is good about the, the uh, progressive image sampler is that it's, uh, it's an image sampler and not a whole render. Uh, second, we have a question which is... Um, so the question is, uh, will there be a VRA 3 for Maya as well? Um, or Will, will we be seeing VRA 3 for Maya as well? Not today, you won't be. Uh, VRA, for Maya is, VRA 3 for Maya is uh, under development, however. So uh, don't worry, you guys, uh, um, my users, will have VRA 3 as well. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I hope this answered the question. Um, it's under development. <coughs> um, in the progressive um in the progressive uh, <laughs> okay um one other difference uh between the VRT and the progressive image sampler is that you can use 
whatever GI solution you want here. So brute force live cache in this case. Uh, while when using uh, VRERT, you are forced to use uh, the progressive, uh, actually brute force only, <coughs> which is which is uh, you. I believe this is a uh, more flexible and uh, um, gives you more freedom uh, to, to to pick whatever uh, engines you need. Okay, so rendering. And uh, while this is rendering, I'm just going to, okay, move this render window here. Um, while this is, this is rendering, you can see that we're continuously improving the quality of the image. And as you can see, we have, uh, um, well, actually, this is a, this is a, brute force GI so it gives us a really good render speed um, in a couple of uh, in a couple of seconds you can see that probably a, under a minute uh, we'll get um, less noise here and uh, much better quality and we have a teddy bear Yeah, so uh, the good thing about this is that it works with distributed rendering, so um, you can plug in more computers if you want to. Um, one other uh, uh, one other um, good thing about the progressive image sampler is that you can, uh, y being an image sampler, it's uh, and not uh, not uh, another render. It supports all of the features of V-Ray. Uh, as opposed to, for example, the subsurface scatter, which uh, the fastest surface scatter, which is not supported in RT, uh, because it requires prepasses. However, since here you can do the prepasses and you can sample progressively, you will have this feature um, available. Okay, <coughs> so let's uh, let's see another example with some real hair. And this is Scene Explorer. I'm just going to close this one. So uh, we have uh, this uh, interesting style of the. And once more, the render window is far away, but we can see well. Yeah, you can see uh, immediately that we are rendering. Um, thousands of hairs and millions of triangles uh, a polis actually um, quite quite fast as I'm doing a webinar so not bad for 40 seconds um, all of this using the new and improved um, shaders and optimizations of uh, V-Ray. Let's uh, move on. So, um, actually, nothing more to say about <laughs> the hair shader. It just renders faster. Um, here is another another example of the uh, progressive rendering. I'm just going to. Um, Switch to production render. I'm sorry. Okay, so um, the question I have a uh, we have a question, and that is, uh, what is the configuration of uh, of my machine? So um, my question. Uh, my machine is uh, Intel uh, Intel processor Extreme 990, I believe. Just a second. Let me just uh, guess this one. So, I I believe I can. So it's um, X990 at uh, 3.47 gigahertz and 12 gigs of RAM. So this is this is this configuration I'm using uh, at the moment. Um, 
let's try and see how it how it looks with the, the active shade. So this is very RT. We can move around. Uh, actually, we can move things around. Oops, sorry. I think we have we have it locked. Yeah. So if we take a look, we can move it around and switch the switch the position the, the, the position. So so this was RT. However, um, if we switch to the progressive render. And we do have, uh, now I'm not able to make any adjustments to my scene because I'm just currently rendering. So that's, uh, that's that. Um, so we have a question about uh, how the progressive sampler is affected by shading rate parameter. Um, well, since we have a progressive rendering, um, this uh, this is not taken into consideration. We are able to uh, constantly shoot more and more rays. So um, you can try it and test it for yourself, but um, it's, uh, it's irrelevant when using the progressive uh, sampler. Um, actually, this is not uh, exactly the, the scene I wanted to show you. It's this one. A very useful feature A very useful, uh, not feature, but a, a very uh, good example for the progressive render is that when you set up your scene, you can quickly set up uh, the depth of field using um, using the progressive sampler because it, it uh, really quickly gives you the idea of how it will look like. And um, of course, if you like it, you can leave it rendering. But uh, yeah, if you don't, you can quickly interrupt the render and uh, make changes. Okay, so I guess this is not uh, enough for progressive sampler. Uh, let's take a look at uh, a one interesting feature. And um, using the same car, let's, uh, let's render this actually. Oops, still a huge resolution. Let's, uh, let's make this smaller and fit it into the screen. Uh, we have two questions. The first one is: Is it possible to do a batch render, a, uh, to batch render a scene with the progressive render, or does it have to be uh, rendering in the VR frame buffer? Um, yes, uh, you are able to do this the much uh, the, the the same way as uh, using VR RT as a production render. Uh, you have a limitation over the, sh the sampling rate, or over. So if you switch here. Um, under the under the progressive image sampler, we have the se the, the settings for maximum amount of render time and uh, the noise threshold, which you can you can pick which one of it uh, to just a second um, which one of these uh, sh 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 will will be the decision maker of uh, advancing the the animation. Um, another question is. Do you go to brute force instead of irradiance map or like cache to reduce flickering and saving irradiance maps to disks? It looks like it's going into that way. Um, to be honest, I don't understand. I I don't understand the question. Do do we do this? Uh, um, you can. You can try uh, and uh, can you try and refine the question again, David, or or you can uh, or you can ask the, the same thing into the forums. Uh, meanwhile, I'll try to answer the next question. So, brute force. 
uh, with yes, uh, brute force. With we're since we are improving the speed of brute force, you can afford higher higher levels of the um, of the subdivisions. Uh, you don't have you don't have animation mode for the brute force. You have the same settings uh, as the old one. S but uh, because we have improved the speed, you can afford to go higher in the subdivisions, which will decrease your noise and the flickering. And I hope this does answer your question. Um, Uh, yes, it will help. <laughs> is is my best uh, answer to to the sub subsidiary question that you have. Um, uh, okay, um, is there a possibility to limit the progressive sampling to a time to give it x amount of time per frame to render animation? I think oh, I just answered this question. Um, so. Okay, uh, moving on to the feature that I wanted to show you. Um, okay, where, where, where was I? Uh, so, um, yeah, sorry. Here, um, I have uh, once I have done my rendering, you can uh, you can decide that uh, you want to change something and um, you want to do it for example um, I don't know a client comes and says okay I want to change the color of, of uh, this uh, I don't want it to be chrome but uh, to be a little bit goldish for example and you already have some animation or something uh, already done as a production so we want to save some uh, time so what you can do is uh, first of all of course make the change so uh, if I close this and select this one and take a look at the shader change the change the reflectivity color to something yellowish and then in the settings here uh, we have a render mask which will be um, which will be um, uh, you have the, the options of texture and selected so I'm going to pick up selected for the moment and because I have selected uh, this baggage compartment over here I'm just going to re-render and actually let me cancel this because I'm using the progressive sampler and you don't you're not going to see anything so let's make another change to this color yet so I'll make it more I don't know red, and if I just switch to let's say the adaptive DMC, because take a look at the buckets. Um, I'm not rendering anything else except for the except for the uh, baggage compo for, from the element that I have selected. So this is uh, <laughs> thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Method. This is uh, this is really uh, awesome feature uh, to me as a, as an artist uh, as well. Um, the other way would be to select a texture, and so if I, for example, select a checker, and let's uh, make something funny. Uh, okay, here is my. Let's plug this in. Okay. I just want to tile it a little bit and render now with the checker as a mask. Oh, let's make a let's make some change actually before dealing with this. Uh, let's uh, I don't know select uh, the the shader of the car and change the color like this. Now let's re-render, and now we're just rendering in a checkered pattern, actually using a screen mapping of the texture. So you can see 
you can find this uh, useful in uh, many occasions. So, uh, for example, if you have uh, uh, animated texture as a matte uh, multi-matte uh, element and you can re-render just part of the image using this texture, you can do this. Um, there was a question that is there an equivalent in Maya for the 3 Studio Max distance uh, texture? So the distance texture is um, currently not supported in Maya. However, we are working on this and uh, I believe it will be available um, in the next service pack, I guess. Um, I really can't promise anything, but uh, I do know that we are trying to uh, um, meet to leverage both the uh, Maya and Max platforms. Let's uh, move on. Um, I'm going to show you another interesting feature. Another interesting feature which has been added to the uh, Viri frame buffer. And uh, let's uh, render and move this over here. And this is the small button right over here at the end, which is the lens effects controls. And if I move them over here so that you can see them, um, I'm using the, pro the progressive sampling. So I'm just going to stop at a certain point. And, uh, oh, actually it says no channel, re-render, so I'll have to re-render. So I will wait a little bit, and um, as soon as I find the anti-aliasing uh, good enough for me. I'm just going to stop. And I already, do, I, uh, the warning message is gone, so I do have information about the overbright things in the image. So if I increase my, uh, my bloom effect and increase the size of it, the size of it, you can see that here in the light parts, uh, light emitting parts, I have uh, bloom effect. Um, what's more, I can I can have a glare effect, which will give me, actually, let, let's uh, turn down the bloom effect. And if I increase the glare, you can see that there is this rainbow, uh, rainbow halo around um, the light parts. And this is because we have diffraction on. If I turn it off, we will have just the wave patterns uh, going on in like this. And if I turn on diffraction, it will uh, make it um, colorful like uh, like the spectrum of the light. And you have a couple of options over here that uh, I'm just going to skip. Um, no, the, 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 the stop button in the in the frame buffer does not pause the render, it stops it actually. Uh, because I'm using the progressive sampler, it's, uh, it seems like uh, it has been paused, but uh, it's, it actually stops it. If I were to change uh, the sampler to, say, Adaptive DMC, as soon as I re-render, as, as soon as my buckets are finished, um, I will have the, the, the glare effects, uh, the lens effects um, being uh, evaluated, because I will then have uh, information for the bright images in the for the bright pixels in the image. Uh, the stop button actually is a is a way for you to cancel the render from the frame buffer, and not going uh, here and uh, pressing the cancel button over here, or uh, pushing the uh, escape button on the keyboard. So uh, doesn't matter what uh, what uh, sampler you have chosen, you can see that. Um, in just a couple of seconds, you'll be you'll be able to play around with the lens effects. Uh, it's a really neat tool for you to not go into uh, compositing uh, software and uh, see how your render will look like uh, with uh, lens effects. As you can see now, we have a cleaner image and this beautiful head headlight. And because uh, we're kind of running out of time, I will do try and uh, speed up the presentation. A little note about uh, uh, these mats, uh, or actually uh, VR mat materials. Um, let's take a look at these. This, uh, this is a new material. Um, um, 
we have this question which is um, com uh, you would like a comparison in, in a, a comparison of irradiance map plus light cache versus brute force um, the answer to this question is that um, you can go ahead and try the beta because we're still working uh, we don't have the time to cover this comparison right now so uh, and I do not have uh, a specific information it's it's always uh, it's always dependent to the scene that you're rendering so it's it's really it's really a uh, general question so is there a chance that you will add support for open subdivision in the future of VRA 3 um, I do not uh, have the answer to this question to be honest um, however I can uh, ask the developers and um, we'll answer to Kevin so um, uh, you will you will get the answer uh, in the a bit later after the webinar. Um, okay, so this is a new uh, material, very very V-Ray VR mat, uh, which uh, we ha we are introducing with V-Ray three, and this is um, actually a universal material that uh, the the main reason of this material is to be compatible. Uh, throughout all platforms that V-Ray supports. So this means uh, Max, Maya, uh, Rhino, SketchUp, and so on and so forth. So you will be able to to be utilizing a mixed pipeline. Um, the way you work it with this is you open, uh, we can open uh, the editor and it will open, pop up this uh, uh, material editor which has the ability to create several materials which are uh, very specific. You can create standard material which is actually a layer. Uh, it allows you to um, add emissive reflection diffuse very bird of an refraction layer so uh, the very, very bird of is the standard material that you're used to with common parameters such as diffuse reflection, Fresnel and so on and so forth. I'm not going to spend some some more time. You can test it um, you, you can test it uh, on your own. Um, then you can save, you can preview of course, re render and see how your uh, material swatch looks like this. You can save this as a, as a vismat, it's going to be changed uh, um, in, to a VR material, so just don't, 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 uh, uh, don't hang on to the, this name and uh, once you save this file you just um, sorry. You just open it from the file name, so you can load it, and it will be loaded into the material swatch. And this way, you can apply it wherever in the scene, uh, wherever you want in the scene. So using this uh, workflow, let me shrink this down a little bit. We have created every single material in the scene, so um, you can see we support all of the features uh, that the, the standard VRA materials provide, uh, have. So using the uh, progressive rendering we can see we have some nice uh, some nice rendering. Um, and the idea is that we can transfer this uh, to a platform independent, uh, to, to another platform. So um, these materials are platform dependent, and or this is the, the, the this is the main advantage of using um, VR VR mats. Um, you have a very very material converter, which will allow you to load libraries or use the current libraries or export your C materials to VR map or pick a specific material and convert it and so on and so forth. So you have uh, all the options from here, so that you can export. Um, uh, very easy your scene to um, to very VR mat material. Um, let's take a look at uh, a little bit on render time metaballs. So what we can do here, uh, I have just particles which are not rendered. If you take a look, the render is blank. So the very metaballs are created from compound object. I'm uh, sorry, from uh, very objects. 
and here we have a very metabol. So you place it somewhere in the scene, you add some positive particles, you have the option to uh, set negative particles, and I'm just going to set this um, particle radius to 1, and you can see that we have some metabols rendered. Of course, we can increase this one to something random and we can have much more blended particles. So they are render time, they do not um, they are not seen in the viewport. However, you do have the option to have a preview in the viewport. So um, if you want to you have a quality slider over here, you can change the parameter and take a look at how how they look in the viewport. So um, you're not limited into uh, just uh, rendering them. Um, a very interesting uh, rendering, a very interesting render um, created using this uh, technique is we have particles over here, uh, all over the place, and a couple of uh, a couple of um, metaballs, and um, it might take a little bit more time. because we're preparing the render and uh, since we have millions of polygons here um, so to say we will have to we will have to wait just a little bit more but once we're done show any moment now we have lots of lots of objects in the scene Okay, so now we're random, and you can see that all these all these uh, small details are generated using particles. Um, the okay, uh, the webinar tells me my computer is overloaded. So if my voice stutters or uh, there is some artifacts, just bear with me. So you can see some very interesting effects can be seen from all the metabolic Yeah. Yes, exactly. Okay, so um, because I want to show you more features, guys, uh, I'm just going to uh, cancel this and move on. So yeah, cancel this and move on and um, let's take a look just a little bit about how we can use uh, V-Ray to save out deep images. Um, probably most of you um, heard about this uh, new image file format which get, gives the uh, possibility to uh, uh, have post, uh, post uh, processes such as uh, uh, depth of field without any artifacts, any edge artifacts so uh, it it must be really interesting uh, it is really interesting um actually this, this this is the same frog scene however i have created from the helpers menu under the very uh you have very stereoscopic helper um some of you may might may know about this feature uh about the stereoscopic helper it was announced in a previous service pack to uh, very 2 um and it uh it allowed you to uh, save a shade map and uh, then quickly render uh, two cameras out of it and uh, hence speeding up stereoscopic rendering. Um, however, if I set this to render shade map and here under the file types I can pick up OpenEXR and I have already done this one so open up and uh, so I have set this to render sheet map, and I can just uh, I can just uh, render. So if I render once more here, well, actually, since I'm just I'm just going to uh, stop the rendering because you get the idea. As we render, this will going to generate uh, the deep image over here. So. I'm just going to launch Nuke and show you 
how it looks like. Just uh, Okay, so hopefully, uh, let me just shrink a little bit my nuke and share the screen. So uh, I hope you can see this. Okay, um, if we take a, this is this is my uh, this is my deep uh, deep image imported over here, and if we take a look at the deep two points, and just a second, I have tried. I have been playing around with this, but if you take a look at the raw image, we can see that we have a deep image, which uh, which actually is a it's a, a deep image of our rendering with with some depth and as you can see overlapping. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, uh, I think we're seeing the nuke X. Uh, yes, yes. Minimize that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. This is this is this is intended. Um, we we have to. This is uh, this is one of the features that V-Ray provides. Uh, it gives you the opportunity to save in deep image format, which is really really useful for compositing afterwards. Um, so I'm going to uh, go get out of Nuke and uh, move on with the last feature I believe we have for today. And This would be. Let's take a look at the the scene. You couldn't see nuke, or you could. <laughs> um, yeah, we we saw like uh, the green writing, and it was all black, but uh, we didn't see the image. You didn't see the nuke. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, we could not see nuke. I'm sorry. Let me try again. So, <laughs> do you see nuke right now? We see the uh, 7.0 v6 64 bit. Just yeah, just the text port. Yeah. Thanks, oh Barry. no, 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 this one. So oh, there are two. Hmm. And okay, you should be able to see it right now. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Sorry about this, guys. Really, you saw my terminal window. Um, okay, so so uh, this is this is the deep read uh, that we have uh, rendered out of uh, out of V-Ray, and um, I'm just using a camera and deep two points in order to take a look uh, at this in the window. So you can see that this is a 3D uh, deep image actually, with uh, with some with some depth going on, and uh, yeah. Sorry about this, guys, and thank you for uh, for uh, shou shouting out. I was just going to skip it. <laughs> um, okay, and here you can move on with your, your with the, the regular deep uh, deep compositing, which uh, which is uh, I don't know regular. <laughs> um, okay, so move on to the last uh, feature, and this is oops, not this one. Sorry, this is my very RT window. Um, so many windows. Okay, so 3 Studio Max and V-Ray 3. So I have opened uh, another scene here which will demonstrate uh, the render element under V-Ray RT. Uh, it was a much, uh, much anticipated option. So um, as you can see, I have uh, V-Ray RT um, here under, under GPU and um, I have set up a couple of render elements, including the light select uh, very render element. As you can see, we have a couple of a couple of light set of lights uh, set up for rendering. And uh, let's actually uh, let's actually render. And I'm using very RT. Okay, I just crashed. Let me try and close some programs. Probably. Um, probably my graphics card is not uh, handling. Okay, let's cancel this out and try it again.
render. Okay, so we now uh, we are currently loading the textures, and there we go. Uh, can you see the rendering? Yep. Yes. Um, Alexander was asking a question, uh, which I'm going to answer just a little bit uh, after the session. So stay tuned, or uh, actually. Uh, uh, it will be in a written form. Kevin will help me out. So after a couple of seconds, um, we we do see some improvement in the rendering. Uh, our noise is, is uh, cleaned a little bit. And uh, what's even cooler is that I can just uh, select my render elements. And so we have the very lightning, reflection, the GI, which is most moist, the most noisy element, as we can uh, expect. We have Multimate, even uh, Multimates the Z depth and as you can see the pro the proper um, the proper render elements now we can take a look at the uh, light select elements which are really really useful for composting um, for example we can change the color of these lights uh, and change the, the the mood and or or the the inside um, uh, lights, so it's it's a very very cool option according to me, because I can just leave it rendering uh, just a little bit, or plug in a couple of uh, computers, or even a couple of uh, graphics cards. As you can see, since I'm uh, running it in the GPU mode, we do have the power of uh, utilizing faster GPUs, uh, Quadros, Teslas. They will be rendering uh, faster, and we can. Uh, we can have a production quality in no time, and then move on into into uh, composting. We can use the save all images image channels um, if if I want to if I want to render them from the uh, very frame buffer, or as an alternative, because I have uh, here here is a cool trick about uh, very RT because. Um, the usual way to use VRT is uh, in active shade mode. However, 3 Studio Max has a limitation uh, in active shade, and uh, these uh, active uh, these you can't th these controls here are grayed out. You can't select animation, um, and you can't uh, nor you can uh, save your uh, files in active shade. And this is why, when you go to the assign render, you can assign uh, VRT which I have done actually as a production render and this way you get still the you still get the controls of VRT however you have the ability to switch to animation and save your files somewhere on the hard drive and uh, if you want to render animation you can just set the maximum amount of render time in this case to 5 minutes or the maximum pass per pixels which you can um, which you can find out in with the show statistics uh, this is uh, how what is the quality that you want to achieve before rendering the next frame. So this way when uh, VRT reaches 5 minutes or this amount of sh sampling, sh uh, shading sam sampling, we'll uh, save the image and move on to the next frame. And if you select an open multi-channel open EXR image, you will get all the render elements saved with it. So this was again a much anticipated feature. I hope um, I hope you like the presentation. Um, this was all for uh, for now. Um, as uh, as we already said in the beginning, this is just a sneak peek. Um, there will be more things coming, and uh, to make sure you don't miss any any of these new things that are coming, um, I will encourage you uh, for all of our for so um, all our everyone who is our client who has bought uh, V-Ray. Uh, has access to um, to the very three beta. So um, if if you have if you already have very you can go um, and contact. Um, actually, you can register in the site and uh, at chaosgroup.com, and you will be given access to the uh, very three beta. You can download it and uh, you can test it out for yourself and never miss a feature. And um, speaking of this this thing, um, uh, 
the beta is going to be divided into three stages. We are currently in stage one, so you can expect two uh, open betas um, uh, in the future. So you can there will be more things coming up. So just just uh, <laughs> look, uh, keep an eye on our website. <laughs> And um, this is all for me. Um, I, uh, I thank you for attending uh, this webinar and uh, hopefully see you and uh, talk to you soon. Um, Kevin? Cool. All right. <laughs> all right, Simon. Um, okay, let's look at some of the questions that we held off until the, uh, the features were fully explained. Oh, um, sure. Simon, yeah, uh, let's see. Was there one, because I know we covered a number of uh, questions during the presentation, uh, is there any one in particular that you want to, uh, you want me to read out loud or you could read out loud or, <laughs> we'll probably do like three questions and then we'll save the rest for the blog, how about that? Um, okay, we, we, we do, I couldn't answer the subdiv uh, questions, the, the open yeah. subdivisions, so, cool. so I will have to ask the developers first and uh, there is, uh, have been any changes? in baking lightning for using real-time engines for simulations and visualizations. Um, actually, uh, since we're making changes to the GI engines, um, you can take advantage of, uh, of, of these changes, but uh, of course they're, they're not, they're indirect changes to the, to the texture baking. Um, we, we do support uh, texture baking as, as you know, so uh, I don't think we have uh, um, something, something uh, especially for texture baking, um, except for the new GI things that are coming. And I can see another question, uh, not related entirely to V-Ray. Uh, can Deep Image also render image in all depth in Z, not like only what is visible from the camera, but also what is behind the object? Um, actually, this is not the nature of the deep image. So, um, you you can uh, you're asking for a volumetric image, uh, which um, um, this thing. Well, since w in 3D we have uh, objects that have surfaces and not volumes, you can't render uh, volumetric objects inside of it. You you have to assign some kind of volumetric shader in order to have something that is behind another object. So as long as you render the surfaces, um, you're good to go, but uh, you can't render the volumes uh, that simple. And uh, this is just, this is not a limitation uh, from a render point of view, it's just uh, it, there is no information of uh, what, is uh, what is inside of the object. If you want, uh, however, to, if you mean, uh, can you render objects that are behind other objects? Um, I don't believe uh, I don't believe we we, we have the op uh, this option uh, up to now because you can't see what uh, because because when you're rendering from the camera point of view, you have to evaluate um, reflections and refractions from the camera's point of view. So you can't trace what is behind some object. And uh, and uh, expect to get a proper shading from these be behind, from the behind of these objects. Um, so I guess I guess this is. Uh, you can read more about uh, deep image. Uh, um, just just uh, search for it, and uh, you will see what the limitations of the of the formats are, and what uh, what are the uh, uses of deep image. Uh, we have another question. Oh, actually, there are three questions in one. So, light passes now respect includes GI. Yes. Um, however, only for brute force rendering and uh, RT, since it's a uh, brute force. So, uh, you have to use brute force. Um, because the nature of the other um, GI engines uh, is that we shoot less samples and interpolate between them. And this is because they this is why they are fast. We can't separate uh, the the light contribution for, for example, if you have one sample for the radiance map, you don't know how many lights uh, are in, are giving contribution to this sample. So this is not possible technically. Um, 
The second question is, uh, which VRA 3 for Max features will not be included in VRA 3 for Maya at release date? Um, we're far from release date for Maya, so uh, this is an this is, uh, irrelevant question at the moment. Uh, um, I, I don't think um, I can answer only questions for Tree Studio, for VRA for Tree Studio Max, so um, sorry. <laughs> and then it's possible, is it possible to try VRA 3 for Maya Beta? Uh, there is no VRA for Maya Beta. Uh, I mean, we're, we are developing Tree Studio uh, Max version first and the standalone version, which will be, of course, uh, uh, I mean, the priority, and then uh, we can dedicate more more uh, resources for uh, Maya. Um, what are the GPU requirements, both minimum and suggested? Um, there are no. Uh, I don't think uh, there might be some uh, specifications uh, requirements, um, specific requirements uh, on our website. Uh, however, I don't know them by heart. Um, but uh, what one thing I should tell you is that uh, since when you're using um, when you're using uh, the GPU, you're rendering on the on the graphics card, and you're using the uh, video video RAM available for your graphics card. So if you're rendering a heavy scene, you will have to have more RAM. So uh, it's advisable to have a graphics card with uh, more RAM if you're rendering uh, heavy scenes. However, if your uh, your scenes are not that dense. You can go, for example, with one or two gigs of RAM uh, on a regular gaming card. So, this would be uh, my answer. Um, then, then I do believe we have to. We uh, OpenXR two will support volume information right uh, as soon. As soon as this feature is announced, we can take a look at it and uh, and see if we can implement it. And does VRA3 respect alpha maps on geometry in the Z depth channels? Uh, if you plug this into the opacity channel um, of the of the VRA shader. Uh, it will cut out the geometry, so um, yeah, I believe so. And uh, there are no questions left to answer, as uh, <laughs> as I can see. I I I might be missing some question, but uh, but uh, I believe uh, we can we can do this uh, uh, in written form. Is okay. it correct? Cool. Uh, Is it absolutely. correct, Kevin? Okay. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's like what? It's getting. It's probably 10 p.m. out in Bulgaria right now. So. Yeah, a little bit after. You probably. Have to, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then for everybody else, you probably have to go to sleep or wake up or um, siesta, have a nap or something. But uh, okay, so I'll take over the presentation duties right about now, uh, just to close this thing down. But I okay. do want to remind everybody that Simon um, did mention that there is an ongoing beta for V-Ray 2.0, uh, the latest version right now that's out um, that you can purchase is uh, 2.4, but if you guys are willing to wait, yeah, we're going to offer uh, V-Ray 3.0 as well. But uh, you know what, first of all, thank you for joining us, thank you for being here, thank you for all the questions. Um, we're going to try to get back to you on that blog, uh, so sign in. Um, I'll send you an email for sure uh, with an attached document of all the questions that we've had so far. Mm -hmm. And okay. we'll try to, yeah, try to share it there. Um, but yeah, thank you for attending again. Um, Thank you. So yeah, if you really, really want to get the latest version 2.4 of V-Ray, uh, we do have it at Novage. Uh, we're one of the largest online design software stores, and we pretty much have every solution that you might uh, that a designer might need. Uh, so yeah, if you want to check it out, it's at novage.com. Uh, you can speak with our V-Ray specialist, uh, Bob. There, uh, you can reach him by his email address, uh, Bob at novage.com. Um, like I said earlier, uh, the blog is a great way for you to learn more about any special promos uh, that we have going on, especially if you're looking into purchase like Autodesk. We have a deal, 0% APR financing. Uh, but yeah, you can check it out there. And then the questions, like I said, like I mentioned uh, earlier many times, uh, they're going to be at the blog as well, so check it out. Do like us on Facebook for the latest updates as well. 
Uh, yeah, so next week we're going to have a webinar on power surfing for uh, power servicing for SolidWorks with NPower, and Sue Blackman will be presenting this. So if you guys are interested in checking this out, it is free. Uh, it's going to be an hour with uh, Q&A. Uh, you can head on over to novich.com slash webinar slash 88. Uh, and today's webinar is being recorded, so once we're done, we're going to convert it, and we're going to upload it on vimeo.com. And if you want to hear Simon's voice and my voice uh, talking about V-Ray 3.0 for 3DX Max <laughs> again, it's going to be at vimeo.com and also youtube.com slash, slash uh, novich, too. But yeah, um, Simon, do you have any last words before we sign up on this uh, session today? Um, just uh, just uh, thank you, thank all of you guys. Um, we really, uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, the session, and um, uh, I, I really enjoy uh, seeing uh, there is an interest uh, in V-Ray uh, because, yeah, that's what we're here for. We want to, to, to make your life easier, to make your shading and lightening uh, <laughs> a, a better, a, 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 an easier process and an enjoyable process. Cool, cool. But, yeah, I mean, if you guys have any other questions, email me at Kevin, Kevin at Novage.com, and then I'll forward that to Simon. So that yeah. way he can filter out his inbox. And <laughs> uh, but, yeah, if you guys haven't seen the movie, you could, uh, the heist movie uh, from Chaos Group, which is absolutely hilarious. Do check it out. Uh, you can find it at, on Twitter at Novage or also at, at Chaos Group. So, all right, signing off. Great. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.